what, what the haters talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Well, I tell you, the more things change, the more they remain the same. A boys basketball team has been kicked out of a Cincinnati area recreational hoops league for wearing uniforms bearing a sexually suggestive name on the front and racially objectionable names on the back. Four weeks, y'all, just four weeks into the Cincinnati Premier Youth Basketball League season. Parents from one team noticed that the players on the other team were wearing jerseys that had the name the Wet Dream Team on the front. And on the back, they had names like Negro and Coon. Where do we start with this? Where do we start? I mean, you know, this was a production. This is not like one kid made a mistake and said something. This is people who sat around and drew graphics, right? They do graphics, then they sent it to a graphic designer, then they sent it to a printer and they made the t-shirts and then the other uh, jerseys and they sent the jerseys off to the players, gave each one of them the jersey and they, the players put them on and their parents saw them run out on the court with them this is four weeks into the season, so they've already played a few games, and the parents saw them playing the games in these uniforms, right? And nobody, nobody, nobody stopped it. I can't say nobody said anything. Somebody could have said something, but one thing is for certain. Nobody stopped it. And I'm just getting to the production side of things. We're not even talking about the whole side of approving the design in the first place, or even the concept. You see, from what I understand, what I've always known is that who's ever over that organization, whether it be the coach or some type of administrator, they have to buy, they have to make the purchase. The students send their money in and either a coach or an administrator, somebody high up, make the purchase. Well, I won't say high up, but somebody on the administrative side of things, management side of things, make that purchase. And it's approved always by the coach. Always approved by the coach. So the coach, this leads me to believe, probably gave them the idea in the first place. And he probably told them, I got your back. Don't worry about it. Some of the kids probably already had racial viewpoints. Not probably. They already had racial viewpoints already. And they probably sat around using racial epithets all day long. And the coach, you know, it's birds of a feather flock together. You know, that's the type of team he want. So they probably all got together and said, let's just do it. We're going to have some fun. And I got your back. If you come down, I got your back. And the parents didn't have a problem about, with it because the parents are racist. See, that's where they get it from. They get it from their mama. They get it from their daddy. That's where it comes from. Four, four weeks. It took them four weeks to figure out that it was a problem that those shirts were a problem, those jerseys were a problem. Four weeks. Do you know how many parents show up at these games, these youth games? A few hundreds at least, a few hundred at least. Nobody stopped it. The referees didn't stop it. The coaches didn't stop it. The parents didn't stop it. These motherfuckers are uncivilized, man. There's no way around this. Where they come from, I used to think that the youth would turn things around. I really did. I gave the youth the benefit of the doubt. I said, man, if we stand any chance, it's going to be the youth. 
but the parents are poisoning the youth. The parents are making sure that America never, ever, ever see any substantial growth with racial harmony. They're going to make sure. They're making sure of that. They're doing their part to make sure of that. So who should we blame? Should we blame the parents? Should we blame the coach? Yeah, blame all the motherfuckers. And make sure you blame the referees. Blame the person who had the keys to the facilities, who, who had the keys to the building, open up the building, and let them in, let them run up and down the damn court. Blame all of them. Blame the janitor. Blame the, the damn concession stand people. Blame the fans, too, because they cheered them on. You see? They running up and down that court. They got fans in the audience. Go, 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 go. All of them bear some responsibility. This is bad even for Cincinnati with all of its historical racial events. Cincinnati is one racist ass city. That's why I can easily see those dudes doing that, being from that city. I can see them becoming cops, killing unarmed innocent people. I can see it right now, as clear as day. You know what their punishment should be? They should send their asses to the hood and let them play against the brothers. Maybe one by though. Let's see how far they get. Let's see how long they last on that court. In fact, they wouldn't even make it out of the dressing room before you start hearing some bing, ping, pong, pow, boom. Be like some Batman and Robin shit on their asses. They wouldn't survive. Not long at all. How insensitive, ignorant, backwoods, prehistoric, does a person have to be to do something like that? I mean, that's some, just some uncivilized cave dwelling shit. But no surprise, welcome to America. No more talk. What the haters talking about?